pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. To each other. came today and thanks for the news about home. I can admit to you that there are times when I get good and homesick for you and Tom and even the steel mill. And I guess I miss the old mill more than ever now that I know you're back there on the job again. Ever walk up on the hill where you and I used to sit when I was a kid. I'll always love that spot, because that's where I first decided to be a steel man, like my dad. Remember? Remember all those times? Remember? Sure, I remember, son. This spot up here in the hill means a lot to me, too. Whenever I sit up here, I miss you the most. Maybe it's because, because I feel closer to you up here. I came up here the day you first went off to war. That day, I was sad. I came up here the day I heard of you winning that medal. That day, I was proud. Came up here today because I just won a medal too. I'm proud of it. It's not exactly a medal, it's the Army Navy E button. But it's the nation's way of saying, good work, well done. It means that the men in our plant have been turning out the tonnage, the steel tonnage this battle of production. And that, son, is the program of every last one of us back here. In fact, to help us, Uncle Sam and our company together are spending over $700 million on a steel expansion program that's the biggest thing in our history. Because this is a war of steel. So we're enlarging old blast furnaces all over the country and putting up new ones at a great rate. We picked up one from Illinois and moved it all the way to a valley in Utah. That blast furnace will turn out tonnage for the West Coast. A headache for Hirohito. And right in the heart of the biggest steel plant in the world, there are some immense new open hearth furnaces, turning out the kind of tonnage the country needs. And pretty soon, more of it will be rolling out of the big new open hearth furnaces that are being rushed along in Pennsylvania. Wouldn't surprise me if they broke some records out west. With the new open hearth furnaces being built there, it's a war of steel. And that means we need plenty of high-grade electric furnace steel. So, new electric furnaces are springing up, almost before you can say Jack Robinson. There's a new rolling mill in Alabama that's increased its capacity 50%. Turns out big plates. 140 inches wide. They tell me it's a honey. And I know of a strip mill that was built for rolling sheet metal. But right now, Uncle Sam needs plates. So in 37 days, the boys converted the sheet mill into a rolling mill for plates as thick as one inch and 72 inches wide. Boy, you ought to see it. It's breaking production records every month. Makes you proud to be a steel man. But besides new tools and buildings, the steel expansion program calls for whole new plants. So pretty soon, what used to be farmland in the shadow of the mountains in Utah will be turning out a crop of steel. It'll be a bumper crop, better than 900,000 tons a year. 
This will be the biggest steel mill west of the Mississippi. And we've built another new mill in California to take big 30-foot billets and roll them three strands at a time. Roll them into long, thin, red-hot steel rods. Miles of them. That's no aid and comfort for the enemy, huh? Then, of course, there's steel pipe for oil pipelines. That's a war weapon, too. They call that pipeline Big Inch. It's made in a plant in Ohio, the only mill in America that can turn out such quantities of seamless pipe that big. We gotta make steel, yes. And we gotta shape it, too. Form it into the weapons of war. For instance, springs. I guess you know by now how much the reliable operation of a machine gun depends on good spring steel made into links for the ammunition belts. Spring steel is formed into springs for big guns, too. Some of them are for anti-aircraft guns. Then there's a lot of tiny springs for all kinds of automatic weapons. You fighting men need millions of springs, and we're making them. There's still another way of using steel for war. All kinds of wire are braided into cables, some for military telephones and radios, and we're spinning steel pipes into big bombs. It's the world's newest and most efficient way of making bombs. I used to tell you that steel was a man's game, but in this war, women have joined the ranks of the steel makers. You should see them at work in quite a few of the plants and mills around the country. There's a plant in Pennsylvania that used to be a sheet mill, but now its job is cutting and shaping the extra tough protective armor that's needed. Women in that plant are getting so they're really skillful in their jobs helping to turn out armor for American tanks. We're making a flock of uh, calling cards for you boys to deliver with our compliments. You'll be glad to know we're building invasion ships. The invasion ships are built in big prefabricated sections. I'd hate to be a Jap when a fleet of our invasion ships is coming in, loaded with tanks. We're building a lot of ships. Good, staunch merchantmen and hard-hitting fighting ships and escort vessels to protect our convoys. But it took still more expansion to put the shipbuilding program in effect. The old shipyards had to be enlarged and improved. And the new shipyard was built for the construction of naval auxiliary vessels. You heard of applying mass production ideas to shipbuilding these days. Well, the idea of prefabricating big sub-assembly sections was pioneered by our company way back in 1918. With so many years of experience behind us, no wonder we're building more ships and breaking more records. And would you get a real thrill if you could see one of our quadruple launchings? We've done it time and again since the war started. The last time, four ships in 14 minutes. That's really rolling out the tonnage. So you see, son, why I say I'm proud of being a steel man. Why I'm proud of this I mean, Navy E means that we're in back of you 100%. We're turning out the tonnage, we're expanding, we're making more steel and more products. And we're going to keep on, because we're in the service of our nation, too. We're sure getting a kick out of being in this thing together with you. And just like you, we're working and fighting for the day of victory. 
the day, the day when, when you will be coming home.